Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Garrett the Cage, and welcome back to the first tree on the Nintendo Switch. Story's progressing beautifully. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's just going well. Find some more points of interest. Unfortunately, we did run across the wolf that has killed two of our pups. Uh, we still have a third one out here somewhere. That awesome lake sequence, dude, that was that was fabulous. So we came up through the lake area, and it wants me to obviously probably go that way. Yeah. I want to see what's to this direction first. See a shiny up to the right. Oh, almost missed those. Well, let's do it to it. This is pretty cool looking. Beautiful. Just wanted to kind of check around the area and just take it all in.
The soundtrack is just so soothing. It's so awesome. It's just really great. knew her last cub would be waiting for her at the first tree. She was almost there. The rain cascaded onto the jade valley where the entrance to the tree was. Life was protected there, because that's where life began. It was now only a mother and a daughter left. Items from my life still dotted the ground as she moved closer to her destination and destiny. Lighting and shadow effects are really solid for an indie title. Like, it looks really good. As I feel like it does. So obviously there was more than 100 different star bursts here. I was expecting to be about 100. There we go. Because I know I missed a couple. The house. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, it's beautiful. It's like snow. I think that's a shiny way up there. Looks like one. Yep, it is. It's definitely an ambulance.
some wood stacks over that direction. Is that a shiny to my right over this little hill? So I think I figured out my problem back a couple episodes where I was trying to jump up where that truck was to get those shinies. You can double tap your... I was kind of waiting to jump the second time. I was like, jump, jump. And I've noticed that if you wait just a hair too long, you don't get the full potential of the jump. My fault completely. My dad was super supportive with my college plans. To a point. Things were okay until this terrible accident happened. I guess a forklift flipped over due to a bad axle and it crushed one of the workers there. My dad didn't eat for days. Even though he wasn't directly involved, it devastated him. Not only did it hurt the business, but it just freaked him out. He would talk in his sleep, muttering things about firing people and saying sorry. One fateful day he approached me said that since my school search wasn't going well, I should finally be a man and take over the family business. He said one day he was going to die, and that all of his work, sacrifice, and even that man's life would be wasted in vain. I just lost it. Teenage me just exploded at the thought. I screwed up. I said things I shouldn't have. He was having a crisis, and I pretty much spit in his face. Oh, man. And the crazy thing is we're seeing more of that happening in today's age. I feel like. Maybe I'm wrong. But a lot of people that have had a legacy of working at a place, eventually the kids are like, I don't want to do this. And it's a little... Obviously, parents and, you know, it's like it's been in the family. You have to. That's part of it. It's like, well, what if I don't want that? That I've, I've heard a lot of stories of those kind of things happening. Listen. The footprints obviously make a, a slightly muddier sound in the marshy area there. It was just something cool I heard. Oh. A shiny over there. Is that the last time you talked to him? No, I called on holidays, and he would call on my birthday. I guess we acted like nothing ever happened, which was stupid. I didn't want to ask about his lumber yard, and I'm sure he didn't want to ask about my job search. I never went back and visited. I think the last conversation we had was about what movies we had seen, and what exactly a best boy is in the credits. I thought he would be here so much longer. Is that the first tree up here? In 
the distance, the first tree illuminated the wasteland. She couldn't go home anymore. She did the only thing she was capable of. Moving forward. My dad died alone in the middle of the wilderness. I should have been talking to him more. I should have done a lot of things differently. If the first tree on earth brought life with it, if it taught the birds to sing and fly and showed saplings how to grow, what could it do for us? There was a letter I received yesterday from a name I didn't recognize with a quote I can't stop thinking about. Death is not the opposite of life, but a part of it. More and more, I'm realizing one important truth. Each of us have our own journey to the first tree, but sometimes I'm not sure I'm ready to take that first step. You already have my love. There's one last message Fox wants to tell her children and she replies back. Oh no. So collecting stars gave you it looks like it gives you a letter per per star. I was curious on how that was gonna tie in or if they were going to tie that in together. I'm doing something simple. on earth I want to be. The only person that would have made the trip worth it is gone. You're going to see him and be with him one last time before you say goodbye. I have one last quote for you by Emerson, sealed in an imaginary letter from me to you. It is the secret of the world that all things subsist and do not die, but only retire a little from sight and afterward return again. Go to sleep, my love. We have a big day tomorrow, but I'll be there with you every step of the way. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Good night, Rachel. Good night, Joseph.
<sighs> Alrighty, guys, I really don't know how much longer we have in here, but I'm going to pause it right here. We'll pick it up in the next episode and keep the journey going. So thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you can, give the video a like. It does help us out quite a bit. Also, check out the channel because we have tons of videos going on over there. And until next time, you guys, stay frosty.